Hello, history friends, and welcome to tonight's Fiveable stream on answering the short answer, answering the short answer question. <laughs> My name is Eric Beckman, and I'm a teacher in Minnesota, and I'm here with Sophia Mank. I'll let her introduce herself. Um, hi, I'm Sophia Mank. I'm currently a junior in high school, and I took AP World last year. Very good. Thank you. So if people could say hello in the chat and let us know where you're coming from. We've had some international attendance lately, which is very exciting for world history. Mm -hmm. So if people could uh, make a note of that too. It's cold here in Minnesota. Got my it's five hundred yeah. grand card again. <laughs> okay. Coming in. Ooh. California, how's the weather there? Arizona, Texas. Oh, mm. Vietnam. Wow. Oh, nice. I, I did That's see a so whole cool. thing city on the map that we had um, before. Anyone else? We had someone from Georgia last time. Oh, yeah. Did, she just commented. Oh, did she? Okay. The public my of chat, Georgia. <laughs> my chat is lagging here. Oh, my God. Okay. And if you have... um not uh, taking the poll, or if you have a question, you can go ahead and do that. And you can also click on the uh, big green button to see what is happening. Um, to see the stimulus that we'll be looking at, we can do all those things. Yes. All right, I'm having like hardware problems on my end. Mm -hmm. So what can people see? sure what will happen yeah i think you're also kind of lagging a little bit oh yeah it would seem okay mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is we'll go we'll switch so i'm going to log out and then can you log in as crowdcast sophia and then bring me in uh yes okay we can switch or Actually, if I don't Wait. come back in a, in a minute, then do that. Because let me see what's what happens. Okay. I'm not really. Like I need to. Arav, where in India are you from? Okay. Well, that worked. Now I'm mobile and everything. India. <laughs> that is, I'm a bit blurry. Yeah, I don't know. How am I now? <laughs> yeah, you're fine now. Oh, man. I don't know what happened there. I kind of freaked out. <laughs> oh, wow. So where's, uh? oh, next to Delhi. Okay, the Delhi. Well, that's oh, that's cool. One of the, right? Tamil. Oh, are you originally? Oh, nice. Tanya, your family. And Arizona. Yeah, it's not hot here. Arizona. Oh, <laughs> wow. Freezing. This is, um, this is world history. That's what's happening right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to take a peek. Oh, we got a lot of people in too. That's good. Tell your friends. Yeah. We're live. Um, I have one other question about, um, so people are doing SAQ assessments in class. Looks like a lot of people have done them. Are those ones mostly that you feel like your teacher's writing and they're like real specific to units? Because I've seen some that teachers share like that on social <laughs> Wow, that is really good, Tanya. That is only going to help Twice you. Twice a week? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Practice um, is key. That's what I'm going to tell you. If you really want to be successful, you have to practice and practice. That's really good that you're doing them twice a week. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and where That's so really um, good. <laughs> your class, are Are you from Kentucky with the class? Because I noticed a bunch of registrations from, Ken, from Kentucky come in at one time. Don't. Yeah, hey, hey, all right. Well, welcome. <laughs> Last week it was Fort Worth. That was our our big group, and then um, we had a lot of people from Greencastle, Indiana. So this it's uh, Jefferson County. And don't worry, I'm not tracking like anybody. <laughs> like I'm just curious where people are coming from. I like maps, like a lot of world history people. So okay, <laughs> European imperialism. All right, I have some in. 
imperialism ones, the topics that I put together, and I wrote all the questions we're going to do tonight, some are pretty closely based on AP questions. And mm -hmm. I look at all when I write practice questions and I write them for us. And mm, I saw that comment there. I don't disappeared. know. I don't know. I see you. I don't know. Okay. Are any of you guys having the same situation. problem? Could be. I only see yeah, five. five. That's my that's my button. Or does it look like a two? Oh, I think it's like the screen that pops up when oh, like, right. someone's reconnecting you. you. Yeah, that does happen. Yeah, right. Okay. You can hear me though, Tanya? Me? Are any of you else having the same problem? Or can you guys see both of us? I'm going to go little in a sec here anyways. Let's see. I can hear oh, good. You. Oh, I can, my... see. I can see you both. Okay, so. Nice. To do that. And I'm going to share my Chrome tab here, and we'll take a look at things. So, okay, thanks, William. Yeah, I, I'm getting some weird fuzz on my end, so it's great. Um. So now we're doing that. We're gonna bring this into focus. Okay, you're back. Oh, good. Um, so when <laughs> I write questions, I will. Um, I spend a lot of time looking at the like skeleton, the of the AP question. So try to really mimic the phrasing, but then write my own topics. So, are you ready, Sophia? Great. <laughs> She's ready. We'll, we'll get rolling here. But just so you know, so we'll kind of see that as we get going here. So this is fiveable. If you're taking any other AP classes, we can, um, you can go on these different days. If you're really into history, you can stick around for Euro or US. So people in other AP classes taken. So we have, I know a lot of my kids take stats and Lang. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can follow fiveable on the on the socials to see what's coming up when we're getting into test season probably getting some uh you know getting some emails too but i know the kids don't always you know use the emails as much so here's the plan we're going to do so i mentioned i use that word skeleton i want to kind of show you what like how a short answer question is put together and that can help you like how to approach one and we can talk about that. And then we'll look at how to answer them. And Sophia, especially, will talk about how she approached them as a student. And then we'll, I have a, I have a set of practice questions that we can do and look at. And we'll talk about how to get the best score on those as we go through. And I did score SAQs last year, and I'm going to do that again this year. So I've been a reader for this, and I've also, I've read all the AP, all the kinds of AP questions. All right. When you do them in class, you may not do them in this format where you do three in 40 minutes, but that's what you'll be doing on the AP test. And we're not gonna spend much time on this because when you um, we get closer to the AP test, we'll talk about how to, um, to do that. But for now, I imagine that most people who are tuning in are either getting a preview of that or more people are probably looking to do well on their short answer questions in class. So we'll just talk about them as in-class tests. Three and 11 minutes, that is intense. Oh my, um, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, like three with A, strong. B, and C or like three like, like oh, just A, B, and three C? three parts. Oh my gosh. You know? oh, so you do God. one that has three parts, yeah. Okay, well three that's parts, a problem. Yeah. That's yeah, about that's right. Where you should be. Yeah, you spend a little bit more time on the ones with stimulus. Mm -hmm. So some teachers talk about the ACE method. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but really answer the question, use evidence. That's the whole thing. And so we're just going to take a look at what that what that's going to mean. So I mentioned this like writing questions. I know there's maybe I know there's at least one teacher here in the audience, but if there's any other teachers, this is kind of like how I will do them. And if you're a student, you might just look at those top lines. But for teachers, just know that I usually find the stimulus first. Like the first stimulus, if you've clicked on that, I read that book a few years ago. I thought it was great, the book, Burton's book, and it's quite readable, I recommend it, for teachers and you know, especially interested youth. Um, and it's like, oh, okay, I should be able to find something in here that's uh, that works. 
So I'll do that. And then I'll take a look at the key concepts. And the CED, the course and exam description, is linked. Um, the links that are underneath the screen. And I'll take a look and then I'll look for the kind of the exact phrasing that's in the outline of the class to do it. And then you kind of look closely. If there's a stimulus, look closely at it. But then for number four, for students and teachers, you might take a look at number four there. Every question on the AP test is going to do one or two of those things. And then for the essays, there's number six, which is argumentation, like building an argument. But that only comes in on the LEQ and the DBQ. What developments and processes means is basically the content, like what happened and how did it happen. So anything that's like a straight content question is developments and processes. But then otherwise, there's that, but any kind of document, you're sourcing it. You know, how do you use evidence, like what supports what, those challenges or illustrates questions, and then kind of then the, the really what are the essay skills there. So this is like the skeleton of the 2019 question number four, which Sophia apparently chose not to answer. <laughs> but you still did okay, am I right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it did, did real well on the test. But so if you kind of take a look, the um, that's what the, the questions are. And so if you were to look in the course and exam description, you would be able to find like some of this language about elites, ideologies. Like, if you just find in the document ideologies, you'd be able to see what's happening with this. So every question is going to have a, a few things. And we'll usually have all of them, sometimes just two. So it'll have some sort of theme. So in the, the questions that are back there, those are like economic and social. So um, we used to say spice, but now some people say pieces or spice tea, or are there acronyms like that that people are using in their class? to keep track of different themes. Yeah, spices. Yes, yeah. Okay, so you're keeping track of the theme there. One of the skills, and then some piece of content. So with this, I kind of, with this question, you can see the theme, the skill, and then the topic for each of these parts. So that's what's happening with the question. Like that's what it's kind of asking you to do. You wouldn't have to talk about industrialization in this question, but I bet most people who, who did this one did. Mm -hmm. New ideologies, okay? So when you're kind of putting it together, you're sort of looking for those things. And so when, um, when Sophia was looking at some of the questions then annotating them for herself, or for this stream, like for us to use, those are the kind of things that she would zero in on, I noticed. Um, so that's the kinds of things that you wanna key in on when you're answering these questions. So remember, you have two jobs, answer the question and use evidence. That's it. So you really wanna figure out what the question is. These are the three most common, or I really think we can safely say the only task words you'll see. Identify, is the easiest. So you can do that in one sentence if it's a good sentence, if it has something specific in it. Describe is more than identify, but doesn't have to have as much analysis. So it could be, your answer will be a little longer. It'll have to be at least two sentences. And then explain is the most analytic. So I mean, you're kind of showing either how or why. So how do you prepare for such a thing? Well, the basic kind of like dad teacher advice is the best advice, you know, do your reading, do your work. And what practice means is when you learn things is try to make connections with other things. So since each question is gonna be come back to one of the big ideas for the class, 
any like example that you read about some specific thing. So you read about the Great Rebellion in India, or you read about Belgian colonialism in, in the Congo. You're thinking, okay, what's the big idea? With both of those, it's imperialism. So you're always thinking like, what's the bigger idea that this illustrates? And you can almost think about how things will turn into questions. You're much better off doing that with a few things than like just sort of haphazardly, you know, trying to learn as many details as you can. Because as you'll see, there's lots of possible examples that you can use as evidence with all of these questions. And then if you do have good notes, the best way to prepare for a short answer question is not to try to cram things or like watch a bunch of crash course or reread all your chapters. But if you have notes, look at your notes and then mark mm -hmm. those up. And as you're marking them up, you're thinking of those things. What theme is it? So you know what it would apply to. What's the big idea? And how might this can connect to something else? How might it cause something else? How is an effect of something else? Is it continuity? Is it change? Is it similar? Is it different? That's what we do. So let's take a look then at, at how that will, what, what kinds of things you'll do. So the next, so that's how you get ready. That's what they look like. That's sort of your mindset. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to let uh, Sophia talk through <laughs> this slide that she made and uh, what her experiences were like doing that. Okay, so I'm going to go based on my experience last year on the AP exam and get basically how I approached it because when you're in an SAQ, you're in a time setting, you only have, I think it's about 40 minutes to answer these questions, which may seem like not a lot of time, but if you approach it properly and you take the right steps, you'll be able to do all of them in that amount of time. So I would recommend personally ans answering the stimulus ones first. That's just because they take longer to read and longer to answer. So I would recommend, I guess, maybe spending like 10 to 15 minutes-ish on the first two because those two are the stimulus ones. You'll have like a passage to read or, or you'll have like a chart, a graph. I remember last year on the exam, there was one like passage one and then there was one with like a graph and you had to like interpret stuff based off the graph. So I would say don't spend too long reading the stimulus. The stimulus, I think it you won't find the answers in the stimulus. I think for like the passage, I think students think that they can try finding their way around it and like get an answer from the stimulus. But I think especially with like the passage ones, they're there to provide a context for you. They're there to give you like background about what you're going to answer. So I remember, for example, last year, um, there was a passage essay, SAQ about like cultural interactions between like nomads and non-nomads. So the passage was just basically like a bunch of background about nomads and how they interacted with um, people who weren't nomadic and et cetera, there weren't really any answers. It was just context. So I would say don't spend too long reading that. Just kind of get like the gist of it. So yeah, again, you're on a time crunch. So I would personally recommend like spending maybe 10 to 15 on the first two. So after like the first two you should have about like 10 minutes left and then you can do either three or four because those ones don't have a stimulus to it it's just a question a b c so they typically take um the shortest to answer um so before answering the question i would annotate look what it's asking for a lot of, a lot of the times the main key to answering these questions is knowing what the question is asking for because if you don't know what the question is asking for then you're not you won't be able to answer it properly. So if it's asking for, um, I don't know, a political cause of something, you don't want to give like an economic or social cause. So know what the question is exactly um, asking and like maybe annotate it, like underline the time period under the re underline like the region. So you know exactly where you're looking for and it'll help you narrow down your answers and your evidence more specifically. So again, the most important thing I would do is answer the question. Again, SAQs are kind of hard to answer because they rely a lot on your own personal knowledge. Like it's not like a DBQ where the answers are like directly in front of you. So what I would do is again, once you annotate like the region, the time period, et cetera, I would go back and I would think of the big themes in like that time period or in that region and try and connect them to your question. So again, if we're talking about like 
1750 to 1900 period and we were talking about like the elites and all that you'd want to think of like okay something with economics something with industrialization you want to kind of connect back to those big themes and then kind of narrow down your evidence with these like saqs they want to see that you like kind of understand it a lot so just giving like a general answer like won't really do it you want to make sure you have specific evidence because that shows that you really like i guess know what you're talking about so it's just the main thing is just answer the question just make sure that you're answering like what they're asking for and also don't make it too long because this isn't an essay like personally i have a problem with like writing too much but on the ap exam you only get one page per question so i would kind of limit your answers to like maybe three or four sentences depending on what it's asking but just make sure you answer the question don't just restate the question or don't try like getting your way around by using the stimulus like sometimes the stimulus will help you like if you get a graph sometimes they'll ask you to like pick something from the graph and like connect it to world history but just make sure you're answering the question properly and not just like restating or saying something like completely unrelated because that won't like end up giving you the point those are just Great my advice. suggestions and the thing, <laughs> so the, the scary thing about it is you have to know something, but, mm -hmm. but the not scary thing is there's always lots of possible answers. And the ones that you're doing in your class might not be quite as much like that because your teacher might be trying to hold you accountable or make sure you understand particular things. But on the AP test, there's always a range of answers. I scored that question that Sophia was talking about with nomads and non-nomads. And kids use a huge range of examples. The Mongols, not surprisingly, mm -hmm. well, these people love the Mongols, was, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, I mean, me too, was the uh, most popular answer, but there was all kinds of other stuff. So there's always multiple possible answers that you can, that you can give. And that's what I'll show you with our practice mm -hmm. questions. So if you've seen this before, that can be helpful. But if that hasn't made sense to you, usually I would say a few a few kids always think this makes tons of sense and it's really helpful, but other kids will report, I'm not really sure what that means. Don't worry about that. If this helps you <laughs> use it, if it doesn't, how many people have had their teachers talk about ACE in class? Mm -hmm. If you see me looking down so I can see the chat, All right? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Our teacher. Um, not you yeah. okay that's fine no, yeah that's okay. right i think people who whose teachers do it a lot like william saying do do it um <laughs> and so then again if it is helpful that's fine but really like sophia was saying it's answer the question like ap really means yeah. address the prompt um yeah and then, um okay really mm. it's answer the prompt and and cite evidence because if you have to explain it'll say that in the in the prompt but for mm -hmm. some people, it works. So one of the key things then to think about is whether or not to figure out what is evidence. And the next slides are something I did with my class um, before we were doing an activity, and it was relating to the empires at a crossroads. It's chapter um, 31 in the Traditions and Encounters book that we use, but all the textbooks talk about the Ottoman Empire, Russia and China being at crossroads, and I found that kids weren't exactly sure what I meant by evidence. So let's just see how this works. You can see what people, teachers, readers mean when they say evidence. So which one of these things would be evidence? And which one would be an answer to the question? You can imagine, you can make up your own question. <laughs> but which one of these things is evidence? Give it a guess, right? So the that there's a difference between evidence and the answer, right? So Greek independence is evidence. And in US history, you can almost always count on evidence in these situations being a proper noun. That's not always true in world history because something like nutmeg could be evidence, like as an example of a spice, also delicious, right? So bean. So here, Greek independence, because it's a specific thing, right? Same thing here, Russian mm -hmm. Empire, right? So which one of these then? So that is an example of, so that's going to count as evidence. 
right? Oh, I see what you're doing there, Tanya. So the first thing <laughs> is the evidence. Okay, for Ching China, you have the attempted reform, right? And then so self strengthening movement. Okay. We're getting the pattern here. Mm -hmm. yes. There we go. To do them all in the same order that's bad it's poor teacher behavior there right okay so you're thinking <laughs> then what do we what do we do so let's take a look if you want to look at right there you are right, right? Mm -hmm. so that is an example of evidence and this is a little bit what sophia was suggesting where you think of the theme so like let's say this question was about japan in the 1800s you're like okay what do i know just figure out what you know and then mm -hmm. take whatever you know and fit it into the answer. Like you yes. have to back your own ability to like figure out how to answer the question. And that's what you should be practicing in class every day. If you're not doing that in your class, do that on your own with your reading. Like look at, there's a picture in your book. You're like, what is this? And then think of, okay, what's this an example of? What, how does it connect to other things? All right. So let's do this. Okay. All right, yes. so if you click the big green button, if you haven't, you can see the stimulus. And then here is a question. Here, here's a quotation. Okay, let's see. Okay. From this book. <laughs> Should I go? Go ahead, yep. Yes, okay, so um, I'll just read this passage aloud so you guys can follow along. In case anybody's on a little screen, we always do that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Following the combination of imperial mismanagement and colonial protests that dogged British imperialism between the first Afghan war, 1839 to 1842, and the globally apparent imperial crisis signaled by trans-imperial interwar, 1919 to 1939 insurgencies. It's hard not to see that the history of the British empire is not rise and fall, but skirmish, scramble, stumble, recover. Not up and down, but perpetual crash and burn. Not success and failure, but fail, 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 and make the most of it. With an eye on your backyard and your hand on your mar on your martini rifle. On all these fronts, dissent and disruption drove imperial experience on the ground and shaped how policy was made on the spot and in London. It's from historian Antoinette Burton, and this was in 2015. Mm -hmm. So what, like, just reading this, what kind of, like, what do you get from it? Like, what do you think it's trying to say about British imperialism? Like, based on the adjectives it uses to describe the British Empire, et cetera. What do you think it's trying to, like, get across? Mm -hmm, definitely a negative vibe. They're definitely using negative adjectives. Fail, fail, fail. Not success stumble scramble so you can see that this historian doesn't really see british imperialism as successful they think that it was just a failure yes messy attempts at building their empire crash burn fail scramble so that's kind of like the main gist of this passage so anti-imperialism yeah, to some degree. Yeah. But what she's saying is that the imperial project it was never like fully successful. Like there wasn't any point where the British Empire was in total control of its empire. Um, okay. so there isn't one rise, one fall. Yeah, and I think yeah. it is meant to be. I mean, she's not pro-imperialist, and she's not an American. <laughs> she teaches in the Northeast, yeah. or she is an American. She's not British. She teaches in the Northeast somewhere. And it's, like I said, it's a really good book. There's lots of good stories in it. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at the question then. So, okay, here's what, if we look at the next slide here. So this is kind of what Sophia noticed when she looked at it. Yes. So if I was, if this was the AP exam or if this was an SAQ I was taking and I was going through this, I would kind of underline the important things. So first here, I noticed that it says imperial mismanagement. So I know that it's talking about imperialism and I know it's, that it's talking about that time period. So I can narrow my search down a bit. And here it's talking about colonial protests. So this is talking about like 
resistance to imperialism and all of that. So I know what we're talking about here. We're in this common theme of imperialism. So that's what my answers are kind of going to be about. So here next in the green here, it says 1839 to 1842 and 1919 to 1939. So these are kind of like the big, th these are the periods of like imperialism, like 1939 over here, like just in a few years, we're going to have Indian independence, all of that. So we can see that this time period is the biggest, like it's the period of imperialism. Are we allowed to use a highlighter? Yes, no, yeah, I think you can just underline, yeah. So just like, you can just underline, star, circle, anything that you find important. So here at first I circled like, like the main topic and then I circled the time period. So I know how to narrow down. So I know that we're talking about this specific um, idea, this specific time period. And then here in the blue here, I, under, I underline skirmish, scramble, stumble, not success, but failure, fail, fail. And this kind of just tells me the purpose of this um, this piece. It's just to say that like Britain wasn't successful, a successful imperialist like power. All they did was fail, fail. They were never really successful. So that's kind of the purpose of this um, work is to just tell us that Britain wasn't um, a successful power. So now I have a good idea of what this passage is about, the context of it, what we're talking about. So um, here I, in the orange here, I kind of just um, highlighted like what it's asking me to do. So I didn't, I should have highlighted the identify, explain, explain. So here in part A, it's telling me to identify. So I guess kind of just like list a historical example that would, and then challenge. So I highlighted this because it's asking me for a historical example that goes against what this author author is saying. So basically, an example that shows how they were successful and not necessarily a failure. Then for B, it's telling me to explain a historical example that would support. So I know for this, I'm trying to find a piece of evidence or an example that supports the fact that Britain wasn't successful and that they were a failure. And then for C, explain one development that likely shaped his view. So like kind of something that like impacted like what made her or sorry her what made her think this way. So these are just like I'm highlighting this so I know like what I'm trying to answer. And yes. Yeah, sure. So go ahead. Good. You could either you could put some thoughts in, Tanya. Um yes. so for that C, we sometimes and, and this will be one that's a little harder to answer until you've like finished mm -hmm. the class. But there will be sourcing analysis for the secondary sources on some of these short answer questions because they're written, you know, in period, you know, four or in, you know, units seven through nine, however your teacher's talking about them. So we can maybe start with with B. Um, so challenging it. Yeah. So, right. You could what you would want to have for evidence there for A, Emma, would be. Yeah, so Britain did secure colonies, right? Don't, oh, yeah, that's fine, Tony. You don't need to know anything about the Afghan mm -hmm. wars to do fine on this. It's an example that she gives a lot. Um, a young Winston Churchill was a reporter during the second Afghan war with the British. There's lots of great primary source material that she uses. Churchill's a terrific writer, not really such a great human being, but a terrific writer. So. <laughs> They used it. So that's an example of where, you know, what Sophia was saying is that you're not going to find the answer in the question. So the fact that you don't know about the Afghan war is actually okay because you couldn't use it as evidence anyways. Um, the Zulus in South Africa would actually be an example for B, Austin. Yeah. Um, C is going to be about things that have happened later because it's what shapes, like what's happened like in her lifetime. And so I'll talk a little bit about that. I think C will be hard for you right now. So you haven't quite, like I said, because you haven't finished the class. But I think A and B would be things. So Zulu's resisting the British, the British fighting the war with the Zulu nation, the Zulu doing that. Yes. Yes, you could, right? Definitely could. So if you were talking about for A, then 
how the British were actually in control. So what you would want to do then is British East India Company. And what did they do that showed that they were in control? So it'd be something like that. So if you said the British East India Company collected taxes in parts of India, or they had their own army that enforced laws, or they had their own bureaucrats that did things, then that would be a way that you would be able to do that. And someone said scramble for Africa up above. Yeah, Emma. So if you were to say the British in the scramble for Africa took control of several colonies, that would challenge it. So scramble for Africa then is your evidence. And you just need to explain it a little bit for the identify to connect there. Or you could do any of the any of the British colonies, you know, you just name one and then explain that they controlled it. Now, Burton's point is that they didn't fully control it as much as those maps look like. So, but, but, but challenge, you should know, doesn't mean disprove. It just means like, how is it complicated? So, you know, she's, she's aware of those things. Yeah, right. Yeah, there you mm -hmm. go, Tanya. Right. For B, no, because it is asking about the British Empire. Here, let's look at the full. Let's go ahead and uh, look at the full prompt. Or you can look at the full prompt on one of the other yeah. links here. Okay. Oh, I see. Go back to this here. So... So you wouldn't be able to use the French. You would have no. to use the British. So that might make the question British. a little harder than, it probably wouldn't be that specific. Although the British Empire is kind of gigantic. What do you think? Is this one successful or not? Oh, I didn't even, I don't think I finished the first one. Oh, the first one you didn't, okay. Yeah, I don't know if my evidence is specific enough. I was still. I can fix yeah. it. Yeah. Then fully becomes the Raj. Yeah. So A here, this is an example. And it's more than you would need. Sophia wrote this without, I haven't, I'm just reading it right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The first one is, yes, it does. So that's the thing. There's lots of possibilities, but your evidence has to be accurate and in the time period. Now, usually the time period will be pretty big. So this one mm -hmm. here gives you a pretty big time period um like the the third um yeah so like the american revolution is before the time period but a lot of other ones would be that's right tanya you would need something yeah. there india isn't quite specific enough so the first one has more evidence that it needs eic raj those are both evidence um world war one's in the time frame but I'm not sure how you would use that. You might be able to talk so like about just, how the British. Yeah. yeah. So that's another example of challenge. Yeah. I think if I were to use World War One here, yeah, um, mm, that that wouldn't work about the shifting the global problem. talent. And here's why. The, no. the prompt is about in challenges to the British Empire, like from inside the empire. So if you said a lot of, in, like the next one we're going to look at with the poster, if you said that a lot of Indian soldiers served with the, in the British military in World War I, that's showing that Britain did control, they did have control. And so that would challenge her argument. Um, but you really, that's how you have to read it, read it closely. The question's asking about, you know, to challenge her argument and that's what Sophia was saying. Like, what's the main idea of the passage? It's a little different than how you read the DBQ documents. Like, okay, what's the main idea here? Well, the main idea is the British didn't fully control their empire, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that mm -hmm. Indian rebellion, then that would be an example of how the British weren't in control. And part of what, what Burton is saying in the book is, like, there's that big rebellion in 1857, but there's also a war in Afghanistan in 1839. There's another war in Afghanistan, which was next to British India, like later in the 1800s. And so, and then there's another one after World War I. There's three Afghan wars. There's the Great Rebellion. Like there's no point. What, what she's saying is you can't identify a point when they're fully in control. It's always up and down. Yeah. Oh, 
so here we are. Oh, right. Yes, you could talk about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Indirect rule. And I think, Austin, that indirect rule, Indian intermediaries, that's an example of something that could count as evidence in world history that doesn't isn't a proper noun. If you notice the other yeah. things that Sophia had in her successful example were proper nouns, right? Uh, British East India Company or EIC for uh, East India Company, Raj, those are capitalized. So, I mean, if you can come up with something that's capitalized, that's always good. But yeah. it doesn't have to be, because I think that phrase indirect rule shows some kind of specificity. Okay. Should we do another one? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, if you're ever looking like to, you know, like you have like 10 hours, you're not sure what you want to do with, I recommend the website of the Imperial War Museum in Britain. Because um, I was doing a presentation on World War One around the world a few years ago, and I spent a lot of time there. There's lots of great images. So, um, yes, Emma, the link to the questions is down underneath. Do people see where that is? There's like a bunch yeah. of links underneath the screen here. Yeah, it, underneath your thing. It's the green button. It says sources for SAQ. Right. The green button just goes to the stimulus, but the questions then oh. are, you see them? I can, I can drop it here too. There's a few different ones. A few people are on the document. I'll just drop it right in here. We don't need to. You see them too? Great. If anyone's not sure. There. The green button goes to just the stimulus because I had that set up for oh. a few days in case people wanted to read the stimulus like whenever they registered so they could mm -hmm. see. Um, but there, yeah, we have this here now. Okay, there we go. Okay. So you can see them. Open That's great. The so here we are. So here's another SAQ. So this is what I was talking about, British India, all kinds of stuff. Now, here again, like if you know what Urdu is or if you recognize the ethnic religious background of the soldier in the picture, that's useful. And you might be able to use it, but you don't have to know what either of those things are. Yeah. Yeah. Does it use it. Arabic letters? It I don't does. know. Yeah, you read Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, are those, they're very are those similar, similar letters or but no? they're some of them are, but some of them aren't, if that okay. makes sense. Like right. it's a combination it's like, of like Arabic and their own. Okay. It might be like if you can use Latin letters like we use English for, like if you were reading yeah. like the Cyrillic alphabet with um you know the the Russian is written in, some of the letters look familiar. <laughs> No, it's yeah, not. It look Urdu like is a syncretic language that's got, you know, some. I'm loving the world history, <laughs> actually. <here. laughs> All right. So I'll let Sophia talk about some things she noticed here, and then we'll do some food um, questions. Okay. So I'm just going to read the context. It says British poster produced in India sometime 1914 to 1918, and the source is an Imperial War Museum. So the Urdu text says. The soldier is defending India. He is protecting his home and family. The best way to help your family is to join the army. So first, I automatically noticed the time period, 1914 to 1918. What event was going on at that time that could be significant to this picture? Yes, it's propaganda. Yes, World War One. That's the big idea in this picture. So if you know that this time period is about World War One specifically, it'll help you in answering the question. So going to the text, I highlighted um, where it says join the army. I should have just highlighted the best way to help your family is to join the army. So I guess this, you can see that this um, picture is, I guess, promoting people to join the army. And why do you think this poster exists? Like, why do you guys think that this is even a thing? Like. What are the benefits of joining the army? Why would an Indian soldier, yes, to get soldiers? Can you think of like a bigger reason? Like why, why do these, like why are they, why do they want Indians in the army? And then, oh yeah, as you can see in the picture, 
Um, I just put an arrow. The soldier is standing like over the Indian um, subcontinent. So you can see like, oh, he's defending, he's protecting his country, all of that. And then you just have the little Urdu text under it. So you can have more political country. Nation. Yes. Skills for the war efforts. Yes, these are all correct. Definitely. More manpower, country, nationalism. Yes. Yeah, so from a British um, standpoint to this, yes, they definitely want to win the war. They're going to use Indian soldiers for their war efforts. Um, manpower, I don't they have. Well, what? from an Indian, oh yeah, you can go. No, it's okay. What do you mean, William, about nationalism? Because the nationalism thing is going to be a double-edged sword here. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that, like, the British, I'm pretty sure if they, if the Indians fought in the war, the British promised them freedom. I don't exactly, I think that's what the incentive for fighting in the war was. Well, at least it's hinted at. And so if they're yes. saying this country is your country, then what's the implication when the war is over? Mm -hmm. um, well, people want more freedom, even if it wasn't directly promised. And so that's kind of yes. all part of what's happening. But all these things that you're thinking of, that's part of that general brainstorming when you look. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I'll help you with that in a second, William. So that's all part of, so he, let me just pause here for a second. So William types in there, he's not quite sure about Indian nationalism. He can still answer the question just fine. Yeah. So that's the thing. There's lots of possibilities. So you have World War I, manpower, propaganda. Um, so that's maybe enough to, to get this done. There's multiple ways that you can go ahead and that you can go at this, this question. Um, so the issue with nationalism is nationalism is when a group of people feel that they should comprise their own state. So what I'm suggesting is that the poster is trying to encourage like a broad British imperial idea of nation, but by emphasizing that they are going to be um, defending India, it's almost promoting the idea of like India for Indians and so that's going to, Indian nationalism is going to lead to anti-British resistance. Um, so let's take a peek then at the questions. Okay. So one historical process, this phrase here, historical process that you'll see in some of the questions means like some sort of big development. So what are some, there's like probably two or three possibilities here but they're really big ideas, but there's more than one for sure. So this would be one where you can start to think too specific. This is really a, also a context question. So what do we see, what big topic, and might even be something we've already said, do we see in the image here? Just type in what you think, like, what can you connect this to? So people up above are saying World War One. That's a historical process, or like, um, or you could even call it global conflict. And so, how does it show? And all you would have to do, right? And then that's Emma's got the second possibility. I was thinking of at least those two possibilities. You could say the historical process you see here is imperialism, right? We see imperialism here. Not yet. We don't see India's independence in the image because mm. that doesn't come till later. But what we see is what happened before that, the imperialism part. So what Emma has in the comment there, British rule and overseas land, how would you name that? What's the historical process? Well, we've already kind of set it up here, mm. right? You, that's right. You, that you would just name it. So you could say the image reflects imperialism because, or British imperialism, because it shows Britain recruiting soldiers for their war effort from India. No, historical process really just means the big idea from history. So like industrialization would be a historical process. Um, trade, expanding trade networks would be a historical process. So if you see that, it's referring to like a big topic. 
Yeah, you might even make that a little more specific, what kind of modernization, like technological development. Okay. So you could also say this shows global war. That's a historical process. If you think of that's what unit seven is called, global warfare, right? So this is part of unit seven. Yeah, right. That would be a historical process, explore, exploration, overseas exploration. And then so then it's reflected. And then you just, all you have to do is name it and then make a connection to the image. So you could do like one sentence with a comma and a because to get it done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one for B is a continuity and change question. And that's one where you don't really need to know too much about the image at all. There could really just even be like a thingy that says, imagine a picture of India or even <laughs> a picture of India. But so that's to change later. So what would be a big change that's going to come for India and its relationship with Britain? Even if you haven't gotten this far in the class, you might be aware of it, especially if you like if you're in India. I don't know if Arav is still with <laughs> yeah. if you're in India right now and realize you're going to be here or like Tanya's family from uh, Tamil Nadu. Um, you'd have that. But what happens with India? India's a new India's yeah. New so name. right on. Yeah. So that's going to be a change. Now, explain means that you need to kind of explain how that happened. And you might even bring it back to World War One, like Sophia was suggesting that since people served the British in World War One, like Gandhi famously recommended that British soldiers um, or that Indian people serve as British soldiers because they wanted to be treated equally. And then when they weren't treated equally, he said, no, we should we should we should um, we should rebel. Yeah, so the rebellion, even before India became independent, would also be a change in the relationship. That's right. So the boycotting or, and so then again, like any kind of evidence might be like independence would be evidence. Like if you said independence after World War II, anything a little specific or a name like Gandhi or Nehru. Yeah. Yep, Gandhi getting arrested and lots of people. And it says Britain and India, so you'd want to talk about how a lot of people followed Gandhi. Just make sure you give like a general statement to saying how the relationship changed. Don't just go like right into the evidence. You want to make sure you're like answering that question to like, did the relationship get better, worse? Like state that and then you can go into your evidence and then just like explain that. Yeah, yeah I can't find my camera. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> um, right. So the Indian national con. Yeah. Right. Or general the other way. way. I think, you know, in general, that's what Sophia is suggesting is best. But if you write the evidence first, you're like, oops, I didn't answer yeah. the question. Just keep writing. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Just keep writing. Like this shows that then you could say the Indian National Congress started wanting India to become independent. You're like, oh, I haven't answered the question. So then you're like, this shows that or thus creating the change. You know, just keep rolling. Yeah. Um. When you're doing it. Yeah. There's no reason unless what you wrote is like the opposite of the answer. <laughs> nothing you write is going to hurt you. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, I know Um. that's when we get close to the AP exam and I do some more of these streams. That's really some of my best advice there. Just like, it's just like cheesy dad advice, but just keep writing. Like, don't give up, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> if you're writing, it's not quite right. It doesn't hurt you. Yeah, exactly, Tanya. She says she wasted four minutes because she was, you know, you're worried. Of course, you want to do well. And that comes from a good part of you, right? You want to do well. But you can't worry about it too much. Okay? So, um, you yes. do have to write in pen on the AP exam, whatever your teacher does. Yeah. Black ballpoint pen. Yeah. And that's okay. And so then if something, if you think something's completely off base, just put one line straight through it. People, yeah, they can't grade oh, anything that you mark out. So don't worry about it. Just put a right, line. You don't have to obliterate it, you know. <laughs> yeah. it. Okay. So then for C, you'd want to bring in a similarity with any other thing, like in the 20th century where there's propaganda trying to get people to do something. Yeah, you could use the United States for sure. Some of you, I imagine, have had U.S. history in high school already, but some haven't. So... I know my students have had U.S. history, so you, you can you, the U.S. is in the world. Right. 
you could even you could go, you know, the totalitarian states trying to get people to do things. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, yep, mm-hmm. for sure. Is it's just talking about mobilization, right? So you could go to World War II or you maybe have more examples, but then you'd want to name, yep, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's right. So it says another empire's mobilization campaign, you'd want to name. The important thing to do would be to name the empire. So that's why we got, um, you know, Jesse here saying, Japan, you've named an empire. And then you'd want to say, what were they trying to get people to do? And how did they do it? So that, you know, would be fairly specific. Like that. All right, let's take a look this here. We're kind of getting close to eight, but, you know, um, we're, we're, we're going fine. <laughs> now for these, I dropped that link in above, or you can see it that goes to the, the thing that says 220 SAQ stream responses. I see a few of you on it. And if people want to take a look at those, yeah, and a not, yep. If you want to type in there, you can go ahead and do that. And I will highlight ones that are, are good. So if you want to toggle between screens, you should feel free to do that here. If you want to- Where's that? To- is that the sources for SAQ or is that a different? It's 9 a.m. in Vietnam. So you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. What time oh is it God. in Georgia? Isn't it like, is it the sun up in Georgia, Hannah? It's tomorrow. Wait, so are, you not in, are you not in school today, William? Yeah, where are you, man? <laughs> 9 a.m., man. We're rocking into period two already. Oh, really? Oh. Wow. Right. So are you, um, <laughs> it snowed, yeah, you get like, how much snow is it for <laughs> school? 6 a.m. for you, all right, I thought, I'm, I remember that. Oh, that's a that's a fair amount. Oh, yeah. Until part. Is that in, in all of Vietnam? Really? Or are you in Vietnam from somewhere else? People can be answering the questions here while I'm, while I'm conversing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I see some people on here. Oh, go ahead and type in an answer. I think there's a you know, an anonymous chameleon looking at number one. Number <laughs> is it the stimulus for SAQ stream? Is it that one or is it a different yeah, one? Yeah, nope, it's the one. It's um, uh, 2020 uh, SAQ stream responses. And I can't see your names there, so you really are anonymous. So don't be naughty. Do you know where that one is linked? Because I can't. Yeah, if it's on. See it. Okay. Oh. Oh, it's it's already sent it, so it's the one that's up above. Oh, okay, that one. And I'm not totally. If I click on it, that could be bad. Oh, you're William up at 8 a.m. School's canceled. Crushing trivia. I know. Watch. <laughs> oh, the commitment. <laughs> Hannah's. It's almost 6 a.m. for her, and she's watching five. <laughs> excellent. What time is it in India? I see. Oh, there you go. That's great. Yeah, feel free to make a copy. But if you want to type in there, you can do that. All right, suppression mm-hmm. of labor union. There we are, some evidence. Oh, right, we got some things down here. Yep. So whoever mm-hmm. typed in white man's burden, why, how would you turn that into an answer? Or social Darwinism, those are both correct. That's correct evidence. Why don't you think about how you might um, phrase it? And then the person who's typing in about raw materials and 4B, then you can think of you're going to want to give evidence. So that's going to be a raw material. And then how did it take advantage of people? So that one's going to be a little longer answer. Okay. And if you're just looking at the slide there, you can see how Sophia um, for SAQ4, how she annotated the, the prompt. The Russian Empire one's a little specific. Um, <clears throat> I think you four, but for three, 
We have. Yeah, that's fine, Tanya. You can screenshot the stuff. I'll drop the link to the slides in to, I just don't like to do that, you know, spoilers and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. All, all this stuff. And you know, now we've changed the model or five, we like, I'm not in charge, but at five, will all this stuff uh -huh. is free, like to watch the replays and everything. There will be some special sessions um, that I'll be doing leading up. I'm going to do 12 leading up to the exam. Um, oh, you are Sophia. You're from India too. Nice. Are you in India, or are you, or are your family ancestry from India in the United States? You don't have to tell me. Talk, talk. Oh, yes. I think yeah, I think seven thirty a.m. in India right now. I might be wrong though. She. Oh, right. Exactly. Thank you, Tanya. I don't know why. All right, we got a lot going on here. That's good. Right? So people are putting some things in here. Okay. And then I think it's okay for these ones, for people who are, it looks like four. Oh, people are doing some stuff. Right? Yeah, taking away. It's going pretty well here. Legitimize. That's a great word. Who's ever just typed legitimize? You're an anonymous duck. I know that's always fun in uh, Google Docs to see what kind of animal you are. Right. Okay. For people here who are working on C, um, you're going to want to think of some examples that would go in there that you would like some specific things. So again, if you're thinking of raw materials, then what's a raw material that was used in industrialization? And here it's not Britain, so you could use whatever. Uh oh, where'd Sophia go? I don't see her either. Hmm. I'm gonna invite her back on screen, see what happened here. Yes. It's not that's not just you. I don't see her either. And when I went to bring her back on screen, it's uh, it's not just you, Tanya. Well, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. Uh -huh. Good. So, yep. The second one here. Yep. Give me a specific example. Yep. During the industrial. So, the one I've highlighted here, maybe I'll make it fiveable blue. I don't know if we have that color in here. Oh, it's terrible. Maybe this blue here. Okay, this social Darwinism in blue, that's good stuff. That's a point right there. Yeah, yeah, feel free, copy, paste. So white man's burden, yeah, yeah, that's also good. So you can see there, those are two, they're similar. White man's burden and social Darwinism are obviously related to each other. But they're different. So if one person remembered one and the other person remembered the other, they're both fine. They're both going to earn the point because then we have the explanation. And you can see each of those, for people who are looking on the, the document there, each of those is, um, is good. Maybe at this point, I'm going to stop sharing that screen. Oh, we're going to get huge now. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm going to do is oh. Okay, I just close Sophia so I can change my screen share and then I'll bring her back. There we are. So Great. I'm going to bring you back, Sophia. Don't worry. You're the first answer on 4C. Okay, I'll take a look at that in a sec.
All right. I had to do that so I could share my different screen. Very good. All right. The first one here on 4C. Let's see. 4C. Okay. Now, here's one of the things. I think this one here is not going to quite work because coal is not one of the resources that they're getting from abroad. It was too bulky, and Britain had a lot of coal. But the, the, the steam engines did require other, um, or they did use other things, yeah, cotton, because the steam engine meant they needed more cotton. So now if you can think of India and China, so then you'd have, they're kind of forcing India. So the, the one with explain is going to be longer. Yeah, so if you have cotton in there and India, then something about how in India people went from producing cotton cloth to producing cotton goods. Okay, so our, for the colonies, so you want to have something about how it's imperialist. Okay, so up here on 4B, again, raw materials, we're going to want to have some, you're going to want to name some things here. Yeah. So definitely the describe and explain are going to be at least two sentences. Yeah. You can do the identifies in one sentence. So again, you can take a look at those two for 4A as effective examples and then think what would be more if you were explaining. Oh. Yeah, this one here is good too, because this one here is not saying how imperialism, industrialization motivated imperialism. The one I'm going to highlight mm -hmm. is blue here now. That showing how industrialization allowed imperialism to happen, right? Like <laughs> that gave them the technology to do that. Yeah, canals, refrigerator, carts, right. If you were to have a country, an imperialist country in there, it'd be even better. Yeah. Um, Could you talk about um, the railroads within, like, in part, like, Africa? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's, like, bringing the resources out of those places. Yeah. Yes, you could. So the British build railroads, which isn't to benefit the people who live there, so they can export mm -hmm. goods from commodities from those countries. Yeah, I think uh, I think this one here is good too now with the cotton. In it. And with this one here and B that I just highlighted, with that one you'd want to, it's, it's close. I feel like, yeah, the next one here is even better. Um, except this part here, I'm going to italicize, inhabitants were forced to, like, who did the forcing? That's going to be the imperialist thing. Again, we're going to need another sentence. Maybe somebody else or whoever's doing that one, you can go back. And say, so how did Britain force the people to do that? If you take this one that I just highlighted and kind of combine it with this one here, then you're rolling. And then the one above it, too. People are kind of working around it. But again, this one here, the cotton and then the starvation. Yeah, the famines in India, like in late imperialism. Just awful. Yeah, that one would get the point, Tanya. If I make it, if I mark it blue, then it's going to get the point. Okay. And we are well past an hour now, so if people are leaving, you know, that's all right. You can, you know, before mm -hmm. we do it, before we say goodbye. But since other people are typing, like, I'm fine. I'm hanging out a little bit. So, like, if you're off to do something like that...
Dumbo Octopus. Marfin Slave Trade. Yeah. This is going to be Slave Trade will be out of the time frame. Oh, I didn't put a time frame in here. Mm. <laughs> okay. So it does fit. <laughs> I meant 1750 to 1900 in there. Well, even then, it's with, if it says that, so Britain abolished the slave trade in eight, or slavery in 1833, slave trade in 1807. You don't have to know those exact dates, but as long as you know that during the 1800s, Britain stopped using slave labor and all of a sudden got up on their sassy horse about how other people shouldn't have after they made like millions of pounds off of it for 200 years. I mean, stopping it was the right thing to do. My point is, I think they got a little uh, self-congratulatory on that deal, given how much they how much they had made. Right. Yeah, <laughs> there is a word for that. So there's a certain word for this. Yeah, monoculture. I think is the word you're looking for, but it's all right. To grow, right, rely on exports, right, okay. And again, I know we go, we're talking a lot about Britain and the other two sources, um, but you could, you know, bring in Belgian Congo. I know that's an example a lot of people talk about, right? Belgians in the Congo. Um, um, These horrible things that happened there is a powerful example. Yes, you could talk about that, Hannah. Like, so that's another way. So then industrialization leads to machine guns. And then the machine gun is a way that countries conquered other places. So that if you're looking at 4C there, that's we have lots of different possible things there. We have industrialization leading to increased demand for raw materials. So that motivates imperialism. And then we also have people talking about steam engines or Hannah suggesting machine guns, someone doing railroads, those are all ways that industrialization was a means of um, yeah, telegraphs to be part of it. Someone's tapping at the bottom there. That those are all ways that industrialization was the means to that end. So you can see that these are all possibly correct. More markets, that answer is not quite finished, but the idea that markets for goods as part of imperialism is absolutely true <laughs> so you can see you have to have something specific so whenever i'm prompting people to rewrite them or add more it's to be more specific or to explain but it's just important to know that there's not just one answer mm -hmm. it's not a, you know, like in a multiple choice question there's lots of ways to get it right Ooh, someone's um, 4A here. I just scrolled up typing about Manifest Destiny. Oh, manifest that is destiny. awesome to remember that the United States is an imperialist country, right? And the U.S. is an empire. So, yep. That's good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, I'm going to, yeah, for sure. Um, motivation. But Well, to answer Tanya's question, it says motivation and means. The question, you could you could do either thing. Is the question is asking how did it how did the one thing lead to another? So whenever it says that, it's not like the only factor. Yes, but you wouldn't have to do both. The big idea here is you don't have to do both. You could do one or the other as long as you have a specific example: cotton, machine gun, steam engine, telegraph, and you explain the relationship. Um. No, they both work. They'll both work. Yeah. And and good questions. Now, if, you're, if your teachers are writing their own questions, they might be using this format to see if you've learned specific things that are important in the class of the reading, and that's okay. So I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying in an AP, yeah, that that's going to happen. But just know in your heart and in the back of your mind that when you get to the AP test, there's going to be multiple possibilities. True story. I learned like two or three things. I graded like 
a thousand some DB or uh, short answer questions last year on that um, nomads, non nomads question that Sophia mentioned back at the beginning. And I, yeah, it's, it was like 36 hours of work. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know how many days, how many days does it take for you? It goes on for eight days. And so mm -hmm. some of that's training, but people who do their short answer questions do it at home. So they scan those sheets. And mm -hmm. then I was just sitting on my um, school laptop, which is a touch screen. And you're just like, you know, mm -hmm. and you grade them a lot faster than ones in class because there's no comments. Yeah. So when I'm up in class, I mean, most of the time is writing comments to help kids. But if you're just popping a score in, score, yeah, yeah, do about one a minute. <laughs> That's I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> but enough about me. My point is that there were two or three things that I didn't know if they were true or not. The kids put in and I looked them up, open a new tab and Google it up. And I'm learning stuff about the Hittites, which is yeah. ancient history, but was in the course last year. So there's things that I didn't know. I know a fair amount after having taught this class for a long time that I didn't know that some, you know, their, their teacher must have taught them that or they emphasized that or maybe they did a little individual project on it and they remembered it um so there's always mo on the ap testers always multiple possible examples like i mentioned most kids nomads they went mongols that's perfectly fine mm -hmm. but kids did all kinds of other things too so now again you might be using them differently in class and that's you know that's all fine all right i'm just going to leave this document open but i think we'll close the stream People have any questions either about answering short answer questions or about any of the content? Do you guys want any advice on anything or anything that you have a question on? I'm going to share the slides too if you think that would be helpful for you. Next week, we'll have another stream. There's going to be a student streamer next week, Charlie Castillo, and it's going to be on the World War, so Unit 7. And um, like Sophia, she scored real well in the test last year. <laughs> she took the class in ninth grade. So <laughs> any other any ninth graders are here? Um, so she, she knows that, and, and she's really engaging. So you can come on back for that. That'll be straight content. And then a few weeks later, there's going to be one on LEQ. All right, Hannah. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's nice. great. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. This is really great. I really appreciate mm -hmm. all the all interaction in the chat. It's super useful. It makes it, it, makes it more fun, too. Yes. for us so next week same time there'll also be trivia questions i'll be working on those and they'll be on the world wars or well it's global conflict but a lot of that's the world wars so that's um unit um unit seven so if you're doing that the trivia will be on that and then charlie will be streaming afterwards mm -hmm. so i'm gonna say good night yeah and, yeah, and just cool. one more thing all the content is like free now too so like you can go back and watch replays of anything that you found trouble with or anything that you need help with. So yeah, it's a new thing that just happened yesterday. So it's exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in the right end of this uh, because the company, you know, is just starting. So it's really trying to build yeah. on it. So come and yes. get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got talking and people, you know, some people have up. A lot of folks are still here. So man, that's great. Yeah. Um, How many people well, are alive? That freeze up at the beginning. So, in any case, so I'm going to say good night. Mm -hmm. Feel free to be in touch. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thank you for joining.